In this video, we are going to see about two data engineering interview questions and this time it is related to Azure DevOps. For any Azure data engineers, Azure DevOps is one of the most important skill to have and most importantly, one should have clear understanding of the Git repository within Azure DevOps. So in this video, we'll be covering two most commonly asked interview questions related to this topic. Let's discuss about these two questions. The first question is, you'll be asked something like, how do you revert the changes that you have mistakenly committed to the main branch? So basically what this means is, say for example, you're using Azure Databricks to write some code and after writing the code, you're committing the changes to your branch and finally pushing your changes to the main branch. And once this is done, say for example, you have made some mistakes in your code. As you can see here in this example, there is a small typo in the print message. And this is just an example. Basically, it can be any change, either from Azure Databricks Notebook or ADF pipelines, Synapse pipelines, etc. And when you made some mistakes and most are wrong changes to the main branch, in this scenario, if you want to revert the changes that you have done in the main branch, how would you do it? So this would be your interview question. As you can imagine, this is a very common issue that can happen while working in a data engineering project. So there is always a chance due to the human error, an unexpected change might be pushed to the main branch. And when the situation arises, how can we revert the changes? So that's what we are going to see in the first part of this video. Okay, as you can see here, I'm inside the Azure DevOps. Here, if you notice something, Currently, I have only one branch in this repository, which is the main branch. Now what we can do is, let's go to the Azure Databricks workspace, and this workspace is connected to the same Azure DevOps repository. And now, to replicate the same example that we discussed earlier, we are going to write a small code using this Databricks workspace and try to merge the changes to the main branch. And after merging the changes, Let's see how we can revert the changes using Azure DevOps. So for that, firstly, as you all know, we should not make any changes directly in the main branch, right? So let's create a new branch for making our changes. So for that, I'll click on the main branch and here you'll see an option called create branch. Let's click on it. Now we are going to create a new branch based on the main branch. Let's give you a branch name as future slash adding Python code. After giving the name, let's click on this create button over here. Okay, we have created the future branch inside the Azure Databricks workspace. Now we can use this branch to implement any kind of changes. Say for example, let's consider we need to write a small Python function. As you can see here, I already have a Python file over here. Let's open this. Here, I just have a simple print statement. Now what I'm going to do is, just below to this code, I'm going to add a Python function. As you can see here, this is the function which basically multiplies two matrix data. So this is the new change that we are going to merge it to the main branch. So usually, once we have implemented our changes, we'll be committing the changes to our future branch, right? So let's do the same thing. So for that, I'll click on the future branch and here you can see all the information about the latest changes that you have implemented. So we just added this Python function inside the Python file. So once you are happy, we can give you a commit message like added the Python function. And after giving the commit message, we can click on this commit and push button over here. One important thing to note here is, before committing any changes, make sure you are giving the meaningful commit message. This is really important and I will explain why it is very important in the later section of this video. Now let's click on this commit and push button. Nice, we have successfully committed our changes. So basically what we have done so far is, we have created a new future branch based on the main branch and after that we have implemented a Python function and committed the changes to your newly created future branch. Okay, now let's go to the Azure DevOps page and firstly, let's refresh the page. Now, if you notice something here, we should be having two branches, the main branch and the newly created future branch. Now, what we can do is, let's merge this future branch to the main branch. So for that, let's click on this create a pull request button. So basically, we are going to merge the changes from this future branch to the main branch. 
Another thing to note here is, if you look at the title of this pull request, you can see the same message that we have given while committing the changes to the future branch. So it is also very important that you should also be giving the title of the PR as a meaningful one, similar to the commit message. So as said before, we'll be seeing why it is important shortly. Once you are happy about the title, you can go ahead and click on the create button over here. After clicking the PR, let's approve it ourselves. And after approving the pull request, let's click on this complete button to merge the changes to the main branch. And here, make sure you have checked this box to delete the newly created future branch as soon as the merging is done. And finally, let's click on this complete merge button. So basically what will happen now is, the newly added Python function will be merged to the main branch. Nice, as you can see here, our pull request is completed successfully. Now let's go to the repos location and here, now we should be having only one branch, which is the main branch and the other future branch that we created must be deleted. Okay, now in the main branch, if I click on this notebook folder and open the Python file, as you can see here, we have our latest matrix multiply function in say the main branch. Okay, now consider the recent change that you have committed to the main branch is causing some issues and you are asked to revert your latest changes from the main branch. How would you do it? So that's what we are going to see now. So to do that, firstly we need to go to the commits tab over here. Inside the commits page, you can find all the history of commits and pull request mergers that you have done so far to the main branch. Here, the first thing that we need to do is, we need to identify the commits that we would like to revert it from the main branch. So this is the reason why the commit message and the pull request title is really important. You can easily identify your commits based on the message that you give during the commits and the pull request. So this is one of the best practice thing to follow while working with repos. Okay, now as you can see here, this final merge added the Python function is a change that we need to revert from the main branch. So firstly, let's click on this commit. After clicking this, you can clearly see our latest changes that we have added as part of this commit. So this is the change that we need to revert, right? So for that, in the top right, you'll have three dots, which is the more options. Let's click on it. Here you will find an option called revert. Let's click on this option. So basically what will happen now is, when you perform this revert, a new topic branch will be created based on the previous version of the main branch. What I mean by this is, before adding our latest changes to the main branch, how do the main branch looks like? So that is what we want as part of this revert, right? So that exact version will be first created as a new topic branch. So let's update this branch name to something meaningful like main before last commit. After giving the branch name, let's click on this revert button. After clicking this, it would automatically prompt to a pull request page. And here, if you notice in the top, it has created a new branch, which is main before last commit. And here in this pull request, we are merging our topic branch to the main branch. So now to explain why we need to do this pull request, I will duplicate this page to open two new tabs. And in one of the tab, I'll go to the branches page. And among these two branches, firstly, I will open the topic branch that we created. And in another tab, I'll go to the branches page. And here I'll click on the main branch. And here in the main branch, if you go to the notebooks folder and open the Python file script, you can see the Python function that we have added recently. Whereas in the main before last commit topic branch, if you go to the notebook folder and open the same Python file script, here you will not be seeing the Python function that we added recently. So basically, this is the change that we need to have in the main branch, right? So that's the reason we are going to create a pull request which will merge the changes from this topic branch to the main branch. So let's go to the other tab to create this pull request. Here if you go to the files tab, you can clearly see that as part of this pull request, this entire Python function will be removed from the main branch. So this is what we need exactly. So let's go ahead and click on this create button over here. After creating the pull request, we can approve it and click on the complete button. 
Again, make sure the delete checkbox is enabled for deleting the topic branch we created as part of this revert. And finally, let's click on the complete merge button over here. Okay, as you can see here, the latest changes are merged to the main branch. Now, if I go to the repos location, and here we should be having just only one branch, which is our main branch. In the main branch, let's go to the notebook folder and open the Python file script. Nice, as you can see here, all of the changes are reverted successfully. And now we have just this print statement, which is the version before our last commit. So this is how you need to revert the changes if you accidentally pushed any changes to the main branch. So as said before, this is a very common problem and it is very important to know how to solve this when the situation arises while working in your project. So this is our first interview question. Okay, now let's discuss about the second interview question, which is kind of related to the process that we did as part of the first interview question. The question goes like this. How do you recover a branch that you have deleted in Azure DevOps? So basically, if someone have access to the Azure DevOps repository and have accidentally deleted your branch, or also as part of the pull request merge, and if you want to recover the deleted branch, how do you do it? So that's what we are going to discuss now. Okay, as seen before, currently we have just only one branch, which is the main branch. So if you remember something, as part of the first interview question, we created a future branch in Azure Databricks and we have deleted it as part of the pull request. Say for example, for some reason, you wanted to recover that deleted future branch in order to get the code again. In that scenario, let's see how we can recover that branch. So interestingly, Azure DevOps does not have a very straightforward way to view all the previously deleted branches. Say for example, if I go to the branches section, as you can see here, we have our main branch here. And if you go to all tab, you can see we just have the main branch. And if you go to the stale tab, we also don't have any branches over here. So basically, we don't have a straightforward option in Azure DevOps to view all the deleted branches. But there is a small trick that we can do to view all the previously deleted branches. So for that, the only requirement is we should be knowing the complete branch name. Only when you actually know the full branch name, you can use this trick. So in our case, we need to record the deleted future branch, right? So we can get the complete branch name from the commits tab. So for that, let's click on this commit tab. So here, we need to identify the commits that we did to the future branch. So this added the Python function commit is the first one that we did today. As you can see here from the date information, which is marked as today at 1.43 a.m. So let's click on this commit. And if you go to the details tab and scroll to the bottom, you'll have information about the pull request that we did as part of this commit. So if you click on this, you can see the pull request information, which is merging from the future branch to the main branch. Now we have identified our future branch name that we would like to recover. So let's copy the branch name using this clipboard option. And after copying the branch name, I'll go to the branches page again. And here in the top right, we have an option to search for the branch name. So if you paste the copied full branch name over here, you'll be able to see the future branch under the deleted branches section. Here, you can see all the information about this deleted branch, such as who has deleted this branch and when this branch got deleted. So you'll be able to see this deleted branch only when you give the exact full branch name. Otherwise, you'll not be able to see this. Say for example, if I just remove one letter from this branch name, the search option will not be able to find this deleted branch. So that's the reason to use this trick, we need to know the complete branch name that we would like to recover. Okay, now we have identified the deleted future branch. So to recover this, we can click on this three dots, which is the more options. And here you will have an option called restore branch. So if you click on this, you'll be able to recover the deleted branch successfully. As you can see here, we have our future branch. And if I go to the branches page, now you'll be having two branches, main branch and the recovered feature branch. So this is our second interview question, which is recovering the deleted branches in Azure DevOps. So as said earlier, 
These two questions are the most commonly asked interview question. So I hope you'll be able to answer these questions in a more detailed way as discussed in this video. So that's it for today. So if you found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe. See you in another great video. Until then, cheers. Bye.